Oke, okay, Sobat Finansial, jumpa lagi dalam podcast Media Asuransi. Pada episode kali ini, kita akan bahas suatu topik yang sangat spesial, yaitu terkait e-commerce industri. Seperti kita tahu, e-commerce industri di Indonesia merupakan salah satu industri yang sangat-sangat berkembang pesat dan jumlah konsumennya pun semakin banyak setiap hari, apalagi dengan adanya pandemi COVID-19. Nah, lalu bagaimana persaingan e-commerce industri ini dan Bagaimana sih buat e-commerce industri ini untuk memenangkan persaingan gitu ya di tengah ketatnya kompetisi dan semakin banyaknya pemain-pemain baru di e-commerce industri. Nah, pada kesempatan kali ini kita sudah kedatangan salah satu narasumber yang sangat spesial. Beliau adalah CEO and founder Ancanto, Faibaf Dabade, dan beliau akan share kepada kita semua bagaimana sih e-commerce industri ini bisa menangkan persaingan di tengahnya ketatnya industri baik di Indonesia maupun di luar gitu ya. Halo Febaf. Halo. Good morning. Hi. Good morning Pak. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. I'm good as well. Thank you. You in the office or in the home? I'm here at Anchanto office in Singapore. Uh, we are okay, headquartered nice. in Singapore. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time for the podcast with Media Assurance and uh, share you share with us uh, the insight about e-commerce industry. Thank you for having me here. I'm I'm really excited and um, uh, re- it's a really pleasure uh, to have uh, myself on your podcast. Okay. Maybe my first question is, uh, how do you see the growth and potential uh, in Indonesia e-commerce industry? Okay. So every time, you know, um, I come to Indonesia, it, it uh, strongly reminds me um, a country where I was born in India. Yeah. So I'm born in India. I moved to Singapore 20 years back and now based in Singapore, Singapore citizen. Um, mm-hmm. But um, Indonesia gives me a vibe of uh, India probably five years back or seven okay. years back. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of potential, lot of young people. Um, many of the users in Indonesia, they experienced internet first time on their phone. Okay. They never experienced internet on the computer. The first yeah. device that they access the internet was is their phone. Mm. And that's the way they pursue. So for them to do everything, communication with the people, doing shopping, experiencing new brands, experiencing new information, accessing okay. information is always through mobile. So that's a mobile for generation. Okay. And I think that that huge population, and if you look at probably Indonesia is like what, one fourth of the size of India in terms of population. And again, a lot of young population. Um, and that is where it is a land of opportunities. Uh, okay. There is a massive digitization happening. If you see the amount of investments done by banks, by businesses, by conglomerates, mm. uh, to digitize the economy of Indonesia and provide access to, uh, to the consumers is, is unprecedented. I believe that the region um, and, and specifically Indonesia holds huge potential uh, first for innovating new products uh, mm-hmm. because every country is different. Uh, okay. We cannot take something that worked in China or India or US and apply that to Indonesia. Indonesia yeah. is Indonesia. Yeah. We have to localize our products. We have to localize um, the way the user experience a particular technology. And that's why I believe that there's a huge opportunity for businesses to to cater to this large market by innovating, by localizing products, uh, okay. and also offering a solution that are acceptable in Indonesian society. And what do you think the key factor uh, for e-commerce industry in Indonesia to grow uh, more faster or more bigger? I think that started with um, the idea that came with the rocket internet, right? So rocket internet kind of first said that, you know, if you win Indonesia, you win Southeast Asia. Okay. So everybody came focusing on Indonesia. So Singapore is a great small developed market. It is, it is a very good uh, innovation test bed, if I may put that mm. way. But mm. Indonesia is where the real battle is happens. Mm. So okay. uh, that laid that idea led to a lot of new players entering into Indonesia market. Mm. That idea that if you want to win Southeast Asia, you have to win Indonesia. Um, that led to many companies to first set up their foot in Indonesia. Mm. And this led to uh, a, a massive fragmentation of the market. Okay. And when market is fragmented, where there are multiple players trying to win the market, 
that is where the growth is driven because then everybody is coming up with new programs new innovation um, new way to sell um, mm. and, and, and new opportunities to even uh, cater to mm. a market so for example indonesia is the first market in southeast asia where mm. a cross border cross hand delivery happened okay right so you can order something from 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 china uh, cross border and get it delivered uh, on cod cash and delivery uh, those those innovations those new products offering just to win indonesia as a market has mm. driven our say significant amount of market growth okay. the second market growth that came from i believe is the growing penetration of 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 mobile phones and mm-hmm. and internet uh the i think the third biggest factor from my point of view in a recent like this last 7 to 8 years that really drove um uh, adoption in indonesia market is cash and delivery and mm-hmm. alternatives to cash and delivery because as archipelago a lot of people are buying online yeah. first time they don't have confidence to really yeah. see that will they get a product or they get cheated right yeah. yeah so uh, uh cash on delivery solve that problem massively uh because when you do cash on delivery you virtually take no risk uh, product will come to your place you try it you say it if you like it you keep it if you don't like it you send it back right okay uh, that really uh, adopted now what we see in last i would say 24 months or so is a mix of covid plus also mix of payment innovation okay uh, different payment options coming in place a uh, buy now pay later coming in place uh, mm. the way to apply for buy now pay later has become yeah. extremely seamless uh, the credit verification happens pretty much instantly mm. uh, within 24 hours and mm. people have an ability to spend and buy and mm. the same people were not able to spend and buy this 24 months back mm. these are the some of the factors um, and of course fueled by uh, a massive marketing promotions done by marketing yeah. mm-hmm. uh, some of those factors driving uh, adoption um, in in indonesia mm. uh, as you know indonesia is a big population uh, country and archipelago country yeah. what is the biggest challenges for, uh, if you see in e-commerce industry or e-commerce species in indonesia and what is your solution for that fiber i think the biggest challenge that comes into indonesia because of the land uh, huge land mass mm-hmm. multiple a few thousand islands plus minus dipping upon high tide or low tide okay. um, and uh, um, this completely distributed population of course there are few, yeah. few centers of uh, high density population um, mm-hmm. the biggest challenge is you know your cost of servicing for an order right so okay. if there is an order that somebody is ordering for let's say a worth of 20 mm-hmm. how can you deliver that order uh, with the matrix that is profitable or with the matrix that is um, i would say um, doable mm-hmm. because the logistics cost is is necessary okay. you have to ship the product you have to ship the product if the product mm-hmm. goes to a remote island somewhere it has to go to the remote island somewhere mm-hmm. and people are not going to ship the product for free you have to ship yeah. it at at a cost plus uh, margin mm-hmm. right that is a challenge to uh, make a sustainable i would say mm-hmm. uh, long term sustainable profitable business mm-hmm. delivering parcels to customers at a profit is one i would say big challenge that is definitely there because Indonesia being a developing country and if you look at the big mac index the uh, the average salaries there outside uh, the area is low and that impacts the average order value and when the average order value is low uh, beyond certain point of delivery cost you lose money and you is okay to lose money for some time but it's not sustainable mm. figuring out the mathematics for profitable sustainable delivery is first challenge mm-hmm. also the second challenge also comes here is about the payments okay even though there has been a lot of innovation lot of new solution buy now pay later ha- are happening um, mm-hmm. which has its own challenges and which has its yeah. own positive side and not so positive sides 
mm-hmm. and everybody has their own opinion about it. Yeah, uh, but I think still, by and large, uh, payment remains an issue still in many pockets of of, of Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third issue that comes in here is returns. Mm-hmm. Um, many a times, return processing is even more expensive. Mm, and okay. in certain product categories, we see that return is north of 20%, 25% sometimes. Yeah. And this is where it becomes unsustainable to return and again to resell those products or restock those products mm. into the, um, to the new customers. Uh, I would say those are logistics, payment, returns, um, some of the challenges that we see. And yeah, biggest, another one, definitely there mm. is. Indonesia is a fragmented market. There okay. are multiple marketplaces, there are multiple players, there are multiple options. And mm-hmm. this high degree of fragmentation is, is bad and good. Uh, I believe mm-hmm. there would be consolidation um, coming soon in logistics space as well as in the uh, e-commerce space. And once yeah. the consolidation happens, then the price point can uh, stabilize or, or, or mm-hmm. become more rational. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, in the com- in the e-commerce in business or e-commerce industry, uh, there is uh, omni-channel and uh, multi-channel platform. Could, can you elaborate uh, what is the difference uh, for that? For that? Sure. So, so if, um, if you look, uh, I um, let's say 10 years back, the yes. concept of buying a product was to go to a shop and buy it. Or uh, mm-hmm. I remember my childhood uh, in, uh, in a small compound or village in India, Mm. Um, uh, you go once a year for uh, for the Pauli shopping to the district, okay. and you mm. buy clothes and you come back to your village. Okay, um, that has changed now. So, mm. first coming to multi-channel is that there are multiple channels for people to buy same product. Okay, um, let's imagine I we are a brand, and that brand is selling, let's say, um, school bags. Right? Okay. So now there are multiple touch points, multiple channels for people to buy school back for their for their daughter and sons. Um, mm-hmm. First, you go to the shop, you buy from there. Okay. Another option is that the same school bag company is also having their own .com site and selling on their own site. Uh, okay. Schoolbags.com, co.id. That's one mm-hmm. more channel. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say Shopee approaches to that school bag company and mm-hmm. say, why don't you sell on, on Shopee uh, mall mm-hmm. as official store? So that mm-hmm. school bag company start to sell on Shopee also. Okay. So, uh, that's one of the channel. Then the school bag company start to sell on TikTok shop. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then on a Facebook shop. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and on WhatsApp Messenger. So mm-hmm. multi-channel is um, a situation where a business is selling same products mm-hmm. across multiple touch points. Some channels could be a distribution channel, retail channel, or digital channels like marketplaces, social mm-hmm. commerce, live commerce, okay. um, or even their own website. So that's a multi-channel mm-hmm. scenario, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's come to omni-channel. Yeah. Now, in the omni-channel mm-hmm. is more of a, a situation where customer can shop across multiple channels, but they have same experience. Mm-hmm. Right. What what does that mean? It means that if I buy, if I go to a shop and buy from shop, mm-hmm. or if I go online and buy online, I have a same product, same price point, same information, mm-hmm. and same experience. Mm-hmm. I can go to shop, I can buy from shop and return it, or I can okay. go to an online store um, and buy it and return it. Prices, mm-hmm. I don't have to do price comparison between buying online and, and, and offline. I can go to a shop. I, let's say my daughter wants a particular bag and mm-hmm. that bag is out of stock now. Mm-hmm. So I can go to a shop and place an order and the order gets, that stock is available in, let's say, Surabaya. It's not okay. in, uh, uh, Bandung. Okay. So I get that product shipped from Surabaya to my house in a couple of days time. And my, mm-hmm. daughter, my daughter is able to buy the same bag she wants. Mm-hmm. So that's more of a omni-channel experience where uh, you can interact with the brand, you can interact with the retailer from any channel, and you still have a similar experience um, to an extent. 
Okay. And you see, which one of this platform uh, is the best practice for e-commerce business in Indonesia? Faber? What we see that, you know, we see a lot of uh, businesses and mm. Indonesia, mainly the businesses which were selling offline, mm. uh, they are more venturing into omni-channel. Omni-channel, okay. Because we believe that every commerce will become e-commerce one day, or it has already become mm. very fast. Yeah. But the retail will still remain relevant. People still want to go to shop. People still want to have that experience of touching product. People mm. still want to go to shop and maybe have a coffee or mm. meet friends. Or maybe have a lunch there at the food court or, 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 or a restaurant of their choice, right? Mm. So we don't believe that e-commerce will fully replace stores. Stores will be always there. Mm. In some form and some shape will be always there, no matter what. Mm. Right? Maybe not this extent, maybe it will shrink down to a, a particular size. But stores will be there. And stores will become more like a showroom where people come, they sit, they experience a product, mm. but then they decide to buy online from, from the house or the garden mm. and then get it home delivered because they don't want to carry it. Right? We already see that happening for many products for years. Like, you, you know, you, you go to a shop, you, you book a TV or, or, or a refrigerator, you don't carry that with you always. Right? If it's a big bulky, it gets home delivered later on. Um, so that behavior will, will extend more. Um, in terms of, so if the business has the roots in retail, we see that they're adopting multi-channel strategy. Uh, they're adopting omni-channel strategy very, very efficiently. Um, mm -hmm. So for example, we work with one of the very famous Indonesian business called Kenmo. Kenmo mm -hmm. sells a okay. lot of brands, a lot of product, mother mm -hmm. care product, baby care products, trawlers mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And Canmo is adopting the omni-channel strategy extremely efficiently. Mm -hmm. There's a massive growth in that, right? Uh, the second part about multi-channel, we mm -hmm. see multi-channel strategy are very good for businesses which were in a distribution, mm -hmm. uh, which were like businesses which are like direct-to-consumer brands or new mm -hmm. brands that are born digital and they are born native, right? For them, they see multi-channel across e-commerce um, platforms like uh, live commerce, chat commerce, social commerce, mm. marketplaces as a fastest way to get to the consumer because then they can leverage on the footfall that is coming in the mall. They don't have to build a store. They don't have to put a deposit. They don't have to do a renovation, sign a long-term lease contract. They start digital mm. first. Um, so multi-channel has been adopted massively by new businesses, brand distribution businesses, whereas omni-channel um, is adopted a lot by retailers. And we see a convergence over a period of time, right? Many, mm -hmm. many, many successful, not many, but some successful digital native brands, they ventured into retail as well. Mm -hmm. right? And they started offline, at least some presence, uh, to have that interaction with the customers. Mm. Okay. Uh, with the large number of e-commerce in e-commerce players in Indonesia, what do you think uh, one company makes able to win the competition? Uh, Faber? Sorry, can you please repeat the question? Uh, with the large number of e-commerce players in Indonesia, uh, what do you think uh, one company will make uh, able to win the, the competition in uh, e-commerce industry? Faber? I think it's localization. Um, mm. A company which really understand the local market, the need of consumers, the need of users, the need of businesses, um, and a company who knows the pulse of people will win. Um, Indonesia is, is a market where there is a huge young crowd, uh, aspirational crowd. Um, they want to have a certain way of, I would say, experiencing brand. Uh, so to be successful in Indonesia, uh, which are the e-commerce company, marketplace, or even a technology company like us uh, want to be successful? You mm -hmm. cannot come to Indonesia and say, look, this is the way it worked in Korea, follow it. Or this is the way it worked in uh, uh, India or, or, or China or US and follow it. It will never happen. It okay. has to be localized. It has to make sense to okay. a somebody 19-year-old in a remote island uh, or mm -hmm. in a city of Surabaya, 
uh, yeah. Jogja should feel relevant, should feel, okay, mm-hmm. these guys understand me. Uh, the price points, the communication, uh, the influence of the use, the channel they use, the message they use has to click with that uh, young mind in, in, in a remote part of Indonesia. Then only you can win. Okay. Uh, you see the local player uh, will be able to compete with a foreign player in e-commerce in Indonesia? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Absolutely. And we have seen that, right? Uh, we have seen that Blibli and those companies which are backed by large um, local businesses and conglomerates, uh, mm-hmm. they are there. They are thriving. They are, of course, there is an intense competition there. We see, um, for example, that um, there are multiple, uh, what we call a vertical e-commerce player. They, they, mm-hmm. they, for example, focus only on either beauty or cosmetics um, mm-hmm. or let's say particular fashion products. Uh, those guys are still making inroads. Those guys mm-hmm. are still, uh, I would say, pushing the boundaries. Um, so I don't think why not. Um, and it was always proven, right? For the large markets, there would be always one or two local player. Um, like so, similarly in, in India, uh, mm-hmm. there's now a duopoly market between uh, a Flipkart, which is a local Indian company, uh, versus uh, Amazon. Uh, mm. Of course, Flipkart is now bought over by Walmart, so this is a Walmart Flipkart yeah. there. But the roots of Flipkarts were in India. It started by Indian people uh, for mm-hmm. Indian market. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the solution that Accento provide for e-commerce industry or e-commerce player, especially maybe in Indonesia, favor? Sure. So we are a, a B2B software as a service company, Pakai. Uh, mm-hmm. What we do is that we work on the back end of e-commerce, right? Okay. Uh, so we are almost like behind the curtains. We are not a B2C. Okay. Right? okay. And we see that there are two large operations on back end of e-commerce. Um, so let's talk about it. The first operation is online selling. Yeah. To sell online, you need to have a catalog. You need to prepare a catalog. You need to prepare mm. images. You need to prepare description, categories, mapping, pricing marketing, targeting, retargeting, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are thousands and thousands of people involved in doing those activities, right? So what we do is that on that part of sales, e-commerce sales operation, we provide softwares that make that operation simple for businesses. So we work with a large number of distributors, brands, and retailers in Indonesia, which mm-hmm. are selling online. And they are using a product like a digital shelf, our e-commerce catalog management or order mm-hmm. management system for them to create, build catalog, distribute the catalog across multiple channels. So let's say Shopee, Blibli, Lazada, uh, Tokopedia, Bukalapa, right? Uh, and manage that centrally. So it saves mm-hmm. a lot of efforts. They don't have to duplicate their efforts. Uh, we have a product called Digital Shelf that helps brand to know their competitors online so that they can price better. So they can track the competition, right? So that's on the on a online sales backend operation part. The second part of the backend operation is logistics, which is a big part. Mm. Okay. Logistics is a necessary cost, necessary evil that everybody has to ship the product, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so on the logistics side, uh, we work with marketplaces. We we provide a software to marketplaces to online seller, to distributor, to logistics companies, to the postal operators. And our software does a few things. So first is that we provide the, all the integration between a logistics player and marketplaces and the web stores. So for example, if you're a logistics company uh, from Jogja and you want to start offer uh, e-commerce warehousing services to sellers on Shopee, Toko, um, and uh, Lazada from Jogja in the Jogja area, then you need to connect the uh, the online shop, the toko of uh, that seller to your warehouse. So we provide that uh, mm-hmm. channel integration. Then we provide integration with the last mile delivery companies. We call a carrier integration. Mm-hmm. Then we provide a warehouse management system. So we are extremely mm-hmm. strong warehouse management system that is mm-hmm. built for logistics service provider to offer e-commerce value-added warehousing services, picking, mm-hmm. packing, uh, kitting, bundling, okay. uh, and running multiple warehouses, right? 
Uh, then the next product that we offer on logistics side is to uh, do a tracking of parcels. So typically mm-hmm. for a large country like Indonesia, you always ship with multiple companies, JNA, JNT, uh, Ninja Van, and, and Sichapath and many yeah. other, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have to track the parcels. Let's say you have mm-hmm. every day you're shipping, you shipping 5,000 parcels, yeah. five different partners. Uh, and when your customer calls, hey, where is my, where is my order? You need mm-hmm. to have the centralized information to answer yeah. that question confidently. So we have a tracking product that tracks all the parcels that you ship every day and okay. gives you a consolidated result and status in real time where your parcel okay. is. So you can get back to your customers. Mm-hmm. Um, then we also have a product uh, called OXM, Operational Experience mm-hmm. Management. Mm-hmm. Because many of these logistics provider or e-commerce enablers, they want to um, they want to provide these services, but under their own branding, under their own website, under mm-hmm. their own URL. Uh, so our OXM products allows our 3PL customers to uh, white label our entire product suite and deploy mm-hmm. it under their uh, their branding, uh, if I may mm-hmm. put that way. So uh, any particular target market for uh, Engento Solution, uh, especially in e-commerce industry or uh, any sector, other sector maybe? So we work with uh, multiple players, right? So we've been working with businesses which are uh, basically um, small, uh, mainly mid to large, uh, mid market mm-hmm. to large. That's where our sweet mm-hmm. spot is. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, we do work with some smaller players as well. Um, we are more enterprise and more mm-hmm. premium product in Indonesian market uh, and across mm-hmm. actually globally, right? So okay. we focus mainly on businesses like um, we serve all, but uh, if you make call of focus, will be on um, retailers, distributors, okay. cosmetics, logistics companies. Okay. Uh, in fashion and what is, okay. What is your, your strategy uh, to help the local players in Indonesia or entrepreneurs or e-commerce in Indonesia to leverage their uh, potential or their uh, revenue stream or their business paper? Yeah, so I think... Um, Look, Indonesia has a different challenges as compared to other markets. So, for example, mm-hmm. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, they are a bit cost lab, labor cost sensitive markets. Mm-hmm. Um, Indonesia challenges are different. Um, Indonesia, you can hire um, relevantly low cost labor to do operations. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the challenge in Indonesia is accuracy, uh, okay. information, mm-hmm. uh, because a cheap doesn't mean accurate always, right? So, mm-hmm. you have lots of people working at mm-hmm. a very low cost. But if mm-hmm. they, they do not have a system, if they are not accurate, um, you will be always dependent on some few individuals in the team. Mm-hmm. You don't want that to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So this is where we come in place. Our strategy for Indonesia market is that we help our customers to become a bit more accurate. We help our customers to avoid cancellation of orders. We help our customers to do a better pricing. We help our customers because Indonesia is a large market we help our customers to do multi-warehousing. Warehousing across different part of, let's say, Java and Sumatra, so that you can ship locally rather than shipping everything from uh, Chekarang, for example, right? We, do, we, mm-hmm. don't, we, we want our customers to save the shipping cost and shipping efforts. So our strategy is more localized, number okay. one. Okay, localized. Localization is extremely, extremely important for us. And mm-hmm. We don't even want to be seen as a foreign company in Indonesia. We want yeah. that's why we always hire a local team. Our country mm-hmm. head is local Indonesian, yeah. uh, Wiki. and the entire team, the customer support, implementation, sales, everybody's local, right? Mm-hmm. So localization is number one. Number two okay. is that coming from a accuracy, uh, accuracy, okay. accuracy and intelligence data mm-hmm. intelligence point of view, that is what mm-hmm. we try to do. Okay, can you share with us uh, Enchanto's client, especially in the commerce industry in Indonesia, maybe in favor? As we said, right, we're always behind the curtains. We are more like B2B. Most of the people don't even know that, you know, somebody has okay. a process <laughs> order. Uh, but we do work with large number of businesses. Indonesia is the biggest market for us. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we generally don't share too much about who is using okay. it, right? But as I mentioned to you earlier, one of the customer we are very proud of it is, uh, is the group uh, Canmo. Uh, okay. We also, yeah, we also just, uh, if you want a customer names, I can share one more name mm-hmm. with you. 
where we're just deploying our platform is one of the fastest growing uh, Indonesian uh, mm -hmm. business called uh, Sesa. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. We've, yeah, we've been working with many large businesses in Indonesia for the last four, four and a half years. Mm. Okay, uh, maybe this is my last question. How do you see the trend of e-commerce industry in Indonesia for maybe for the next uh, few years? Uh, and uh, what is the potential? Can Indonesian e-commerce industry compete with uh, other uh, Southeast Asia players maybe or or maybe a world player? Uh, five up. Okay, so I think when you talk about next few years, let's first start talking about this year, right? Mm -hmm. um, this year is a bit of a slowdown in e-commerce. Okay. We see a lot of businesses are slowing down. We see that inflation is at high rate. We see that there is a lot of uncertainty about the Ukraine situation, and it has impacted global supply chain. Okay. Um, on the certain products, Indonesia is still an in import-dependent economy, yeah. uh, for sure. Uh, so this year, and our data also shows us that there is a struggle. There is. Of course, some categories are growing still rapidly, but in some categories, either there is a struggle or there is a slowdown or okay. there is actually low number than last year, for example. Okay. So everybody is uh, pretty much impacted um, in, in, in this market, number one. Number two, the investments are slowing down. So if you, okay. see, if you see compare the data for first nine months of last year versus first nine months of this year, and specifically last last four or five months, um, investments into e-commerce are slowing down. Investments okay. into logistics are slowing down. There are much less and less VC deals happening now. Mm -hmm. This is going to impact because so far the growth was funded by venture capital. They're investing a lot of money yeah. and people giving discounts. So mm. that is slowing down now. Because e-commerce is a new industry, because e-commerce is a growth industry, mm -hmm. A lot of growth happens on investments, and that okay. investment has slowed down now. So okay. what does it mean? It means that companies which are not profitable, they have been mm -hmm. charged. Companies which are not profitable, they are struggling to raise money. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, companies which cannot show that they have path to profitability, um, they have uh, they have a difficult time to 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 sustain and grow. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of this is going to impact on the growth of Indonesian market for sure. Mm -hmm. So we see that next 12 months will be a slowdown. Slowdown. Um, yeah, slowdown as compared to what was at the beginning of COVID. When the COVID happened, like e-commerce took off yeah, like, yeah, massive, yeah. massively. But now we start to see uh, a slowdown in e-commerce, which is understandable. Um, so in next five years time, yes, overall e-commerce e growth will be there for sure. Penetration will be there. There'll be more people buying online first time, for sure. Um, there will be more innovation happening. But is it the same speed that we saw two years back? Maybe no, uh, slower than that. Now, the second part of your question, uh, will an Indonesian economy will compete, e-commerce industry will compete in the rest of the Southeast Asia? Uh, Indonesia will be the largest e-commerce market in Southeast Asia, no yeah. doubt. It will yeah. just sheer size of country. Mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia will be e-commerce market for Southeast Asia. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there will be more innovation will happen um, in Indonesia market than the rest of the markets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, insight. Very interesting and very useful, I think, for e-commerce player in Indonesia. Uh, I hope we will we'll meet uh, again, yeah? of like maybe in Jakarta or other country in Indonesia to discuss about e-commerce or maybe about uh, technology industry maybe in the next time. Once Absolutely. again, thank you for your time. Absolutely, your Park. Absolutely, Park. I thank you very much for having me here. It was uh, such a pleasure to talk to you. And yes, I do come to Jakarta very often, so I would uh, love to meet you or coffee or soto I am. Which okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I will enjoy it. Okay. Thank you, Vibe. Uh, yeah, Thank itu sempat financial. Itu tadi perbincangan kita dengan Vibe Belbade, uh, CEO dan co-founder dari Anjanto. Uh, sungguh menarik ya, untuk uh, bicara dengan tentang e-commerce industry. Semoga bisa memberikan insight buat kita semua dan 
Sampai jumpa lagi dengan topik-topik yang tidak kalah menarik dan harus berita yang kalian datang. Oke, okay, thank you once again.